Welcome to week 48 of reselling full time in Australia. This week is going to be a little bit different. I've decided to go up north and volunteer in the flood affected regions of northern New South Wales. A lot of us in our community have been rallying together to collect donations to take up north as well. And so my first half of this week has been driving around and organizing that and helping others in the community with organizing that as well. We are taking it up. We're not sure what to expect, but we're just volunteering our time in however that is appropriate up there and handing out those donations to the right people and the right organizations. So come along with me as we do what we can for communities in Australia that have directly been affected by climate change and a climate disaster. So since first hearing about these floods up at Lismore, northern New South Wales areas and southern Queensland, I have been heartbroken just watching the videos, photos, hearing the stories of these communities that have lost literally everything. There's thousands of homes that are uninhabitable now. People have lost literally everything to their name businesses are gone entire towns are gone and so for me i wanted to do what i could and firstly that started with one of our amazing small australian businesses who sells eco-friendly products and helps people with their eco-friendly journeys was absolutely devastated in the brisbane floods and they lost their entire warehouse and store and so i placed an order with them just to help them out in the little bit that i could they have had an army of people they're scrubbing the shop, scrubbing the stock as well to get it back out to customers. Um, another thing is that Hero Packaging, who I heavily support already, they are an incredible Australian small business. They have been giving out free packaging to any small businesses that have been directly affected by these floods. And so again, I placed an order with them just to help them out a little bit. But ultimately, I really wanted to volunteer my time during this crisis. For me, I have designed my lifestyle and I've started this this particular business because of the freedom and flexibility that it gives me. And in times like this, I want to volunteer, I want to help um, because I am able to physically, financially in my lifestyle situation, we don't have children yet, um, I can give my time and volunteer. And so when I found out that my friend here in Foster was also going up to volunteer her time, it was perfect. I'm joining her so that I'm not alone and that we can be a team and we can do more together. So myself, my husband and his business are also donating a whole bunch of first aid products, cleaning products, toiletries, essentials, but it is nothing compared to the wider community that we live in how much they have donated. Everybody has been amazing with the amount of stuff that people have donated and essential stuff and important stuff that people have donated. So it's it's been amazing just being a little tiny part of wider organization that my friend has definitely been the leader on. <laughs> I'm, I'm just this tiny little part that's tagging along and doing what I can. Um, it's been just mind blowing. So today we are packing up all of those donations, organizing them, labeling them, and packing our cars, ready to head off tomorrow to do, it's about a five and a half, six hour drive up north. So some of the things that I've had to schedule out are my listings going up. So I've scheduled them out for like the next two weeks. So I just don't have to think about them. For the remainder of the week, I'm not putting my store on holiday mode or time away mode. I just think it affects the store way too much. So I have increased all of my listings handling time to four days and so that gives a good idea to the customer of the delivery expectation and I will be home Sunday to ship everything out so um, they won't be waiting really too much longer than the normal time anyway. The other thing is I still had to do my shipping to actually get my items out to people for this first half of the week. So let's check out what's sold on the Sunday and the Tuesday of this week. It is Sunday night. Let's go through what has sold for the last three days. Starting with this big box PC game, it went for $35 free shipping. Amazing Enid Blyton hard book. It has the original cassette tape with it. That went for $59 free shipping. 
an awesome bundle deal with the next three items. They went for $80 altogether free shipping. So we've got this really nice little satin 90 vintage Suzanne. We've got this little sunflower daisy pleated skirt, a little black dress from Virtuelle. This really cool collab piece from Marimiko and Uniqlo, they went for $34 plus shipping. Just a little cotton boutique piece that went for $20 plus shipping. Brand new with tags, jumper that went for $17.50 plus shipping. Cute little silk blend top that went for $17.50 plus shipping. A very cool vintage pleated skirt that went for $20 plus shipping. This Massimo top that I picked up last week, that went for $15 plus shipping. Another bundle sale, these Trenary shirts for men, they went for $44 plus shipping. Another bundle sale, which I love, a Suzanne Vintage 90 set. We've got the uh, short sleeve and the sleeveless. They went for $23 plus shipping. And another bundle deal, these Vintage Katmandu women's tops. They are an older style. They went for $50 plus shipping. This really cool cotton boho dress, this went for $17.50 plus shipping. And lastly, this very cool Y2K top went for $90 plus shipping. Great timing. I just had this vintage bundle come through. $80 plus postage for both of them. Just a little 90s dress there. And then this very cool 60s, 70s piece. I've had a few more sales come through, so I'll quickly show you those. We had this taquito dress, really nice wrapped one. That went for $21 plus postage. And then I had this really cool 90s cowl neck dress. That went for $28 plus postage. And then this Nintendo DS bundle. It's got absolutely everything in it with the box as well. So that went for $165 plus postage. Hello. <laughs> so let's go through a few of the items that have sold over the last couple of days. Starting off with a Poshmark sale, this vintage Suzanne 90 robe that went for $25 plus postage. This gorgeous crochet top, this went for $30 plus postage. A really cool vintage set that went for $20 plus postage. And a pair of Levi's jeans, 516, they went for $45 plus postage. This little Burt made in Korea and from 1978, he went for $8 plus postage. Really beautiful Earth Warriors tarot card set. This went for $18 free shipping. Okay, so I still need to drop off my post so that that gets out. And then also I'm looking for gumboots and a, like, a bum bag <laughs> um, because I don't own gum boots and I don't know what sort of muddy stuff we're going to be walking through and then also like I want to keep all of my personal belongings on my person but keep my hands free so they're the three things I need to do this morning before even organizing the donations and and everything else My mom has kindly donated her car for me to use for the weekend and she went and got four huge bags of this Black Hawk dog food as donations as well for all of the little puppies. I'm also really fortunate enough that we have the platform of my husband's business to be able to collect more donations and get the word out there and everybody has been so amazing and generous in the amount of donations that they have dropped off at my husband's business and the quality as well. People are really going out of their way to get brand new high quality items for these people and it's just, it's just amazing. People's generosity today has been mind-blowing. We've had so many people continuing to drop off more donations today and then cash donations as well. So we're heading into Bunnings to make sure that we can get everything that isn't already on our list um, and, and then, you know, sending receipts and stuff to people so they know what's going up themselves.
We have had another person donate $200 this afternoon, so I'm running into Kmart to grab 20 more fans. It has been a massive day today, packing, categorizing, sorting through all of the donations that we are taking up tomorrow. And now I've packed my bag and I'm personally getting ready to head off. But firstly, we need to ship out everything that I've sold in the last day. So let's go through what's sold. So this brand new with tags taking shape singlet that went for $27 plus shipping on Poshmark. This cowl neck top from Witchery that went for $20 plus shipping on Poshmark. This men's Ralph Lauren top that went for $27 plus shipping. This really cute little 80s vintage dress that went for $16 plus postage. And this vintage paperback, the Sullivans, that went for $39 free shipping. Yeah, mummy's going away for a little bit. I'll miss you. Mm, yeah. I love you. Okay, we are packed to the brim. And we are ready to hit the road. Okay, so it's Thursday morning. The cars are packed and we are on the road. We've started our journey up to the Northern Rivers. We've got a few places on the list to head to um, and some safe places for us as well. So uh, let the road trip begin. We're halfway along on our road trip. We've stopped at Coffs Harbour for a bit of a pit stop and some lunch. But yep, the cars are full and it's uh, pretty amazing to be involved in something like this and just everyone's generosity is amazing. So we still have a big road trip ahead and still the unknown as well. I don't know what we're going to go see and the help that is needed or what we're going to be doing. So uh, there's still that unknown to go. So yep, going to have some lunch and head back on the road. Okay, so we arrived at Woodburn today and we handed out a bunch of fans and uh, toiletry packs and a few other things and um, just driving through Woodburn was pretty crazy. Um, I don't know how that town is going to come back because every house was up to the second story. Um, but we've made our beds for the night and we're going to get a good night's sleep and then head on out again tomorrow. So it is Friday morning and we are at an evacuation center in Evans Head and we're just making up salad wraps to take out with us while we're driving around dropping off donations. Um, and yeah, I mean this evacuation center is full um, and there's plenty of donations here. It's been really good to see that it is well equipped. There's, there's so much of everything that everybody needs. The level of devastation in Woodburn that we saw last night, that's the only place we've driven through was really sad it's really hard to see how like that town will exist after this um, just how high the water went and how much is just destroyed so yeah we're gonna probably see more of that today and um, yeah just do what we can Alright, so we just arrived in Korokai and we've got our fresh wraps. We're going to just drive around and start handing them out. We've also got a few donation centres here that we're going to go see exactly what they actually need to start to, um, dropping off like your non-perishables and cleaning products and all the other donations as well. But yeah, this town's been hit pretty hard and the drive-in was just, oh man, it, it, it is really unfathomable to see how high the water was and how much water was and how far it's gone. It's yeah, pretty pretty intense so yep we'll get on to um handing out the wrap soon
So we went to Korokai yesterday and definitely out there, the thing that they need is the manpower. They have the donations, they're just needing to get those donations out to people. But plenty of services around, there's everything you could think of that is there at the town. They were cut off for one of the longest periods of time and so it feels like there's still a lot still sort of catching up over at Korokai. Um, but we were able to get specific supplies out to people in their homes. We were driving around with fresh wraps, we were driving around and then asking people what they wanted, going back to the donation centre, picking up specific sized gum boots and then taking them back out. Um, but what we're finding there is, is, yeah, it just needs to get into the hands of the people that need it. So um, now today we are just stopping off at Woodburn. There's a huge evacuation centre here, just another helicopter flying over. <laughs> But there is a huge, sorry, donation centre here in Woodburn and it is extremely well organised. There's people leading certain sections. It's very well signposted. Um, anyone can come here and help, but there are people in charge and actually there's a system, people doing what they can. And at the same time, it's just bloody amazing to see that. It's so amazing to see how many people are volunteering, doing what they can absolutely anything that they can and the amount of things that are getting donated it really is so heartwarming to see and I mean on top of all of that it's really heartbreaking just driving around the streets it's the level of devastation is really hard to comprehend and the level of water that went through these places is also just really hard to fathom um, one of the clips that I'll show you probably now is as we were driving from Evans Head to Woodburn on the street signs that show you where the corner is they're all bent and sort of got cuts through them and we couldn't quite work out what that was and as we've been hearing personal stories from the evacuees at the centre they are from boat propellers the water was so high that they were rescuing people on the boats and the propellers from those boats were cutting um, the street signs. So if you, for to context to, you know, for, bring some further understanding to that, if you just look at the next speed limit sign on your road, the water was about a metre above that um, in entire towns. It's really hard to comprehend what people have gone through here. Um, we are hearing lots of personal stories from the evacuees themselves, people in their homes just digging out mud. And I'm really glad we are getting that um, human story because it really puts into perspective how important it is that we have come here and just to do whatever we can. It is important. One specific story that's just helped me keep going today is we had a girl at the evacuation centre that needed a size 3 gumboots and we looked everywhere and I was going through the gumboots all day yesterday at this donation centre and then I finally found a pair of size 3 gumboots and we put it aside and we gave it to her this morning and she was running around the um, entire camp in these gumboots and it was that, that was the point. You know, we gave that person exactly what they needed at that time. And I think that's the timing of it all is really hard. There's so much here at these donation centres that are probably not going to be needed for a few months because people don't have anywhere to put it. Um, but it's all so important. It's all so important. So we've just dropped off a bunch of donations to this donation center in Woodburn and oh, the organization here and the manpower is just amazing to see um, and it's it's a lot more heartwarming to actually put it in a place where I know that it's organized and it's going to go to the right place people know what's there. The other thing that was really good, we were actually able to talk to the organizers of this donation center um, about the situation in Korokai where they're needing more manpower and they actually need people driving around the streets and welfare checks on a lot of these people as well. And that was good to actually tell the right person. She has a lot more volunteers coming up tomorrow and they're designing the plan today on where to put them. And so, you know, even though it was a little bit heartbreaking going out yesterday and feeling so overwhelmed and a little bit like we weren't doing enough, 
that experience has helped give information and the right knowledge to the people that can organize that help and so that that's just been really fantastic but to be standing here and to see the incredible community and manpower it's just it's really heartwarming so anyway we're going to keep going today probably head to Lismore I'll update you soon Lismore now and we've been driving around to a few places so we've been to Curie Mail where they've set up an incredible donation center they've got everything you can think of in there and the people that work that they're doing in there is amazing now we've headed out to Lismore showground we're at the lifeline a huge donation center and again the work going on out here is amazing and a lot of people are actually collecting the collecting donations from here which is even better to see that people are getting it we've dropped off some donations here but then we've got a few hours so we're gonna actually head on into the center and just volunteer our time sorting through things making sure things are in the right place so that people can easily find it and help people carry stuff to their cars so uh, that's today's job uh, in Lismore but yeah it's it's pretty crazy seeing the extent of the damage through Lismore it's it's pretty intense We really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm home now. Uh, yesterday we went to Lismore and we dropped off a bunch of donations to quite a few areas. We went to Courier Mail. The amazing community hub set up there was incredible to see all the donations that were there. Food trucks, people giving massages. Uh, they were seriously leading the way in Lismore. So shout out to Courier Mail and all of the First Nations Bundjalung people in Lismore. And then we dropped off donations at the Lismore University which is set up as the official evacuation center there we also dropped off donations at the lifeline donation center that had been set up at the lismore showground which was another massive hub of so much going on i also volunteered for two hours there just helping sort the donations uh, there were so many people volunteering their time and whatever they could do uh, lots of different organizations working together which was awesome to see overall it was a massive weekend i'm still sort of just overwhelmed and my head is a bit of a blur there was so much that we saw so much that we did so many stories that we heard I actually think we were really fortunate to speak to people directly about their experiences because there's so much hearsay and third hand stuff that is floating around at the moment but Honestly, the stories that we heard are going to live with me forever. And so I'm, at the end of the day, just incredibly blessed and grateful that I was able to give my time and resources and go and help. I know I'm privileged to be able to do that in many, many ways. I was able to drop everything and just go and leave my husband and my dog and uh, be financially okay with that as well. So I'm, I'm very aware that I'm privileged to be able to do that. But um, just incredibly grateful. One of the things I want to end this video is a little call out to action that the election is coming up very soon and I just ask that you vote for humanity in this election coming up. We need leaders in charge taking dramatic action for climate change and helping to reduce our impact and our CO2 emissions and 
we need leaders taking this seriously because climate disasters like this are going to keep happening and they're going to get worse and so please vote for humanity in the upcoming elections coming back home and back to my business uh yes i made plenty of sales over the weekend i'm not going to do a breakdown this week i just don't think it's appropriate with this video at the end of the day my business was fine i'm fine i'm just blessed to be able to say that so thank you so much for watching thank you to everyone's support and if you are looking for ways to donate to the northern rivers communities i'm going to add a few links in the description below of organizations and ways that you can help best during these crazy times for these people and the very long and very complicated journey ahead for them so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one mm -hmm.